cigarette, love sick, I'm feeling it. You're not the one, but I still want you like the beat in my chest. Love sick, I'm feeling it. I know you're not the one, but I still wanna light up. After our last year's road trip around the Greek mainland, now followed our second trip to the Peloponnese and some surrounding islands. With Defender and Roof Tent, we visit places that are real insider tips and which are often not yet overrun with tourists. So our road trip leads us not only around the Peloponnese, but also to the islands of Lefkada, Elafonisos and Kithida. Come with us when we are looking for great food or romantic places and even make new friends along the way. Always with us, our two French Bulldogs Truffle and Pelle. Follow us to explore crystal clear blue bays, ancient temples, caves, mountain villages and even swim with sea turtles. This road trip starts at the ferry in Ancona, Italy, which will take us to the north of Greece, to Igomenitsa. The special thing about this connection, our two French bulldog terrorists are allowed to travel with us in the cabin. The crossing takes 21 hours, enough time to enjoy the hospitality of a barkeeper, the view and of course a nice warm shower. After arriving late in Igominitsa, we find a great taverna for dinner and only a little later a great pitch for the first night. The next morning we can not only hear but also see the waves and the sea at Giannakis beach and admire the huge old olive trees under which we were allowed to spend the night. The weather is not on our side today and heavy rain sets in. Chasing the sun, we continue our journey towards Lefkada. As we approach Lefkada via the lagoon road, we feel the first warm rays of sun on our skin and admire the rich blue water and the rock formations below. In the island's capital, Lefkada, we explore the colorful little streets and the harbor. In one of the taverns, we find a wide selection of delicious traditional dishes and enjoy the Greek cuisine. Afterwards, we continue our journey to the east coast of Lefkada. And today, we are very centrally located on a private parking lot with excellent infrastructure for campers. After a walk through the harbor, we settle down at the bar Marabou for some cocktails.
Early in the morning, the weather ruins our plans, and the sailors also flock in masses from the sea to the safe harbor of Lefkada. Due to the weather outlook, we leave the island and cross the bridge at Patras to the Peloponnese. Before heading directly to the coast, we have planned a few stops inland. The mountain regions of the Peloponnese hold little treasures for us, which are often not in the focus of tourists, because the coast is slightly more popular. And even in less than ideal weather, the mountain roads are a great experience. The roads are partly adventurous. Again and again, we enjoy the view from up here and the ride itself. Landscape and weather change quickly here. Sometimes we feel like in Norway or Scotland, then again like in the Alps. Arriving at the mountain lake Limnitsivlu, we find that all the local taverners are closed. We had been looking forward to dinner at this deep blue lake, but we don't want to end the day without a delicious meal, so we decide to drive on. Of course, not without exploring the surrounding meadows of the local mountain rivers. During a small break along the way, we observe the clouds on the opposite mountain range. At this point, we didn't know yet that our route would send us over exactly this pass to Calavrita in only a few minutes. At times, we can't see 20 meters ahead and at times Michel would want to turn around. Finally arrived in Calavrita, we strengthen ourselves in the cellar tavern and visit the historic train station in the evening light. In the opposite bar 5050, we let the evening end and edit our photos at a cozy fireplace. On this sunny day, we continue through the mountains in the direction of Foloi. For our way into the oak forest of Foloi, we decide on a route over unpaved small side roads. Only by chance we discover that this route leads us directly through the so-called Canyon of the Centaur. On a short hike through the gorge, we don't discover any mythical creatures, but unfortunately, a lot of blinches.
Before we reach the oak forests of Foloi, our route takes us through the village of Foloi. And here we meet Panagiotis, who invites us for a beer. Michelle admires the scent of the flowers in front of Panagiotis' house and spontaneously receives a small bouquet of flowers, which now travels with us for the next few days. The oak forests of Foloi are impressively huge. We enjoy a sheer endless drive through the bright young leafy green of the oaks. From Foloi, the waterfalls of Nemuta are quite difficult to reach, both by car over partly overgrown and narrow paths and then on foot for the last few meters. Nevertheless, these waterfalls are an absolute must-see. After the hike through the gorge, we arrive at a rock arch behind which the waterfalls pour into a green cave. The air here is wonderfully cool and we enjoy the sound of the water at one of the most beautiful waterfalls we have visited so far. In the evening hours, we reach the mountain village of Dimitsana. At the gas station at the entrance of the village, we are allowed to stay overnight for 5 euros. Arrived in the village center, we settle down in the tavern and enjoy an excellent wild boar roast. There are more than enough wild boars in this region, especially because of the proximity to the oak forests. Shortly before sunset, we stroll through the alleys of the mountain village of Dimitsana. Along the cobblestone paths, we discover countless churches and devotional places before we retreat to our roof tent at the gas station as night falls. On our way to the coast, we pay a visit to the waterfalls of Polylimnio. The pools of these waterfalls are surrounded by green vegetation and invite for a swim. However, the paths along the watercourses are sometimes very challenging. Not necessarily ideal, if you have two dogs on the leash which like to spontaneously start chasing lizards. Around noon, we reach the picturesque Ox Eye Bay of Voidokilia. A few kilometers away, we then visit the restaurant Amophites. 
in the warm sea breeze we enjoy at Zippero, and various snacks like tarama salad, octopus salad and anchovies. We settle down on the beach, copy and edit our photos and enjoy the magnificent sunset. We spend the night directly at Romano's beach. The sound of the waves helps us to sleep and in the morning we are woken up by a fresh sea breeze. One last time, our route leads us into the mountains of the inland. Near Mistras, we want to see the remains of the former Byzantine city. Once there, we find out that dogs are not allowed here. Because of the temperatures, we don't want to leave them alone in the car and so we simply skip the visit of the ruins. Nevertheless, the mountain route here alone was a great experience and the drive here was partly challenging but it was a great fun because of the view and the landscape. Back we go to the coast of the middle Peloponnese finger, the so-called Mani. In Kadamili we explore the alleys and find a quiet place in the small fishing port. At the time of our visit, the Kadamili Jazz Festival is taking place and the sounds of various bands reach our tent from a distance. Even though we are not usually big jazz fans, tonight we really enjoyed the music to fall asleep to. The Café Caffinio in Agios Dimitrios is a little insider tip for breakfast. Fancy creations of sandwiches combine ingredients that lead to a real taste explosion in your mouth. A Greek mountain tea completes the experience. A little further south, we visit the small coastal town of Limeni. The weather once again lets us down. Only for a short time, we enjoy a few rays of sunshine and retreat for a nap in the roof tent. In the evening, we visit a local taverna and enjoy fresh lobster and crayfish. But clouds move in again, and a small summer rain develops into heavy rain. When we arrive at the roof tent, we are all soaking wet, and our dogs are full of mud. Unfortunately, we only notice this when we are already back in the roof tent. So, the next morning, we have a big cleaning operation. If you are in the region, you should not skip the town of Areopoli. Cute little alleys with a selection of bars and restaurants await us here as well. Due to the early hour, however, we only stop at the bakery and have a Greek mocha.
From Areopoli, we continue our journey south. The first stop we make is at Fatia, an old mountain village, which today is mostly abandoned. Many of the houses are mostly in ruins and nature is reclaiming back its place. Trees grow out of the remains and plants overgrow the remnants of human civilization. A magical lost place with a magnificent view of the Mani coast. Today we have booked an accommodation in the very south of Amani. From here we start a hike to the head of Cape Tenaro. The hike leads from the Temple of Poseidon along the remains of the Roman baths to the lighthouse. The route is not to be underestimated, especially in high temperatures. Lacking sun protection and insufficient water supplies, we then abandon the hike halfway through. Nevertheless, the hike has given us great insights into nature, flora and fauna, although we didn't make it directly to the lighthouse. Because of the heat, we prefer to settle down in one of the bays on the beach, directly opposite the entrance to the Death Oracle of Poseidon. In ancient times, this cave was said to be one of the few entrances to the underworld, the so-called Hades. We decide not to climb down into the underworld. Also, because there is a big hornet's nest hanging at the entrance of the cave. Instead, we are drawn to the local tavern. Later at night, between 1 and 3 a.m., we manage to capture a time-lapse recording of the Milky Way over the Temple of Poseidon. In the distance, ships pass by on the Mani, and the mosquitoes that live here enjoy the uncovered parts of my skin. Now it is time to leave the southern tip of the central Peloponnese finger. We drive along the east coast of Amani, over mountain roads, passing some beautiful bays and small coastal towns. Today, we make a stop at Camping Melteni. Our clothing supplies are running low, especially after the muddy night in Limeni. So, we need a laundry day.
The next day we pass Githio and the Dimitrios shipwreck north, before we take the ferry to the rather small island of Elafonisos. The island welcomes us already on the crossing with its rich light blue water. After a delicious lunch in one of the harbour taverns, we rest in the roof tent in one of the small bays. Later, we look for a spot directly at Seamoss Beach. Once again, the light conditions are ideal for a time lapse of the night sky above our Defender Ralphi. This time, even without mosquitoes. Of course, we can't just leave this great beach without having gone swimming at least once. The water is crystal clear. We can look super far underwater. They say there are also big sea turtles here, but unfortunately we had no luck seeing them. Nevertheless, we enjoyed this place very much. After the bathing fun, we leave Elafonisos and make our way to the ferry terminal of Neapoli. From here, we want to cross to the island of Kifira, but the ferry doesn't leave until 10 in the next morning. Fortunately, we are allowed to spend the night directly in front of the guard post of the Hellenic Navy, directly beside the ferry. But the wind freshens up and gale force winds rock the roof tent during the night. The roof tent holds this easily but the wind gusts, which hit against the tent wall, produce very loud noises. At some point, we fall asleep anyway. The next morning, we buy our tickets and the windy crossing begins. On Kefira, we land in the harbor of Diakofti. Already here we notice the wrecks of two sailing yachts, which probably did not have a very good trip. The next, quite new wreck we find on the beach of Diakofti. So, this island really has a lot of wrecks to offer. The surrounding sea seems to be a very difficult area, especially during storms. After visiting the wrecks, we make our way to the coastal town of Avlemonas for a frappé and a Greek mocha. A dreamlike little seaside resort. Time for lunch, which we have at the Scandeia restaurant, just a few miles from Evlemonas. After lunch, it's time for a flying visit to the east coast beaches of Limni and Kaladi. The blue water is so incredibly inviting. But we make our way over dirt off-road tracks to a much smaller beach in the southeast of the island. At Brulea Beach, 
there were only a few small fishermen's huts in a small bay with a pebble beach. We set up our camp and charge our electric storage with solar energy and then go for a swim. In the evening hours, we sit down under the roofing of one of the fisher huts and play some games of Romy. As a thank you for the use of a terrace, we clean the beach after our morning coffee and collect two full bags of plastic garbage. Over the gravel and rocky paths we drive to St. Sophia Cave. When we enter this cave, we are startled. Large flocks of swallows make their rounds in the cave above our heads. The birds' presence, their rapid movements and the noise they make while flying both contribute to a very special, somehow mystical atmosphere. In Kapsali we dispose of the collected beach garbage and stop for lunch. To digest, we then visit the town of Kora for a short walk through the old town alleys. On a Sunday afternoon, there is not much going on here. In the evening hours, it looks different. Then life rages in the restaurants and bars. We like the quiet and enjoy our walk through the city, almost without any other visitors. Because the weather forecast predicted a thunderstorm, we decide to book an accommodation for us for one night. Not so easy with two small dogs. We found what we were looking for at the centrally located Donkey Hotel and its host Haralabos. The equipment of the apartment left nothing to be desired. There was really everything you could wish for on vacation. For dinner, we then stopped at the Tavern Pieros in Livadi and enjoyed the fava, a bean mousse with olive oil and onion, a specialty of the Greek cuisine. When we wake up well rested, Haralabo starts the morning by welcoming us with a romantic breakfast on the terrace of a Dunkey Hotel. That morning, we decided to stay here for a few more days. So we also enjoyed the Donkey Hotel breakfast on the terrace on the following days. We couldn't imagine that one man could come up with such a wide variety of creative and rich breakfast specialties. We have certainly gained a few kilos in our five days at the Donkey Hotel, because Haralabos cooking is just too good.
During our breakfasts, we did not only make friends with Haralabos, but also with the tiny lizards that accompanied us every morning. Who eats that much must also exercise. For example, doing a hike through the woods at Ali Amir Springs in the islands inland. Watercourses run through a kind of jungle. We listen to the singing of the birds living here. The water of the springs is so pure that we even discover crayfish and mussels that have settled here. Once in the north, we must also pay a visit to the lighthouse of Mudari. During our visit to Kefira, we were lucky enough to meet our host Haralabos friends and were thus not only invited to have dinner together at Yanis and Fortini's house, but also received valuable tips for further explorations. For example, we found our way to the watermill of Philippa and the bordering valley of the old watermills. Along the narrow path, a watercourse winds through the forest and canyons. Here we find countless remnants of the watermills that once operated here. Today, flora and fauna have reclaimed the riverbanks and only the stone structures remind us of the former life along this river.
Nearby, we find other witnesses of former island life. In Milopotamos, we find the remains of the old Milopotamos. Situated on a protruding cliff, we explore the ruins of the old settlement and the former dwellings and warehouses. In the evening hours we meet Fortis and Haralavos for swimming and drinking uso in Avlemonas. Just what people do here in the evening. <laughs> Speaking of nightlife, if you want to do a little bar or restaurant hopping on Kefira, Astikon is also a good place to be. There are countless bars, cafes and restaurants here. And if you are lucky, even live music and craft beer tastings. We find a bizarre landscape after a bumpy ride at the beach of Kakia Lagada. Here, a river from the inland with its greenish color meets the dark blue sea at the beach. Surrounded by massive and high rocky gorges, we admire nature and once again collect plastic garbage on the beach. While exploring the island, we had to stop from time to time just to visit the different beaches for a quick swim and cooling us down. One of the highlights of our stay on Kefira was also the picnic with our newfound friends at the springs of the Ararica, where we picked some cherries and then had some self-made olives and uso. The inhabitants of Kefira welcomed us so warmly into their circle that we soon felt like friends and no longer just as tourists. Therefore, on our last evening, we wanted to thank them for the numerous invitations to dinner or the excursions with a hearty German dinner. Following Grandma's recipe, we shopped for potato salad, sauerkraut, Wiener sausages and meatballs. Thank goodness, all the ingredients we need are also available in the small Greek supermarket. Potato salad for 14 people, that was a real challenge. 
Thank God we had active support from our new friends who helped us in Haralabo's kitchen with all the preparation. What an evening! The next morning we almost miss our ferry back to the mainland since we were still awake late in the evening and we have tasted so much wine together the night before. Nevertheless, here it is, the day of farewell, and our mood is depressed. With our newly won friends we leave behind dear people and a carefree attitude towards life here on Kifira. But we hope to see you again soon. Towards afternoon we reach Monemvasia on the east coast of the Peloponnese. Here we want to visit the old town which is located on a huge rock in the sea. But during the day it is very crowded here in the small town. Instead, we look for the parking space and the surrounding mountains. And in the evening, we go to eat but save the old town for the very early morning hours of the next day. The alarm clock rings at 5.30 and around 6 in the morning we enter the old town. The small town is so winding with its small alleys, backyards and tunnels that it is easy to get lost here. In the light of the rising sun, the alleys are bathed in a golden glow. Hardly a person crosses our path at this early hour. Arriving at the lighthouse of Moninvasia, we take a short break, because we are quite tired after such a short night. After a small breakfast on a roof terrace, we continue our journey north. We help some Greek land turtles across the roads and make a small stop in the harbour town of Kiparisi around noon. Then we set up camp right on the beach of Focchiano. There are two small taverns here that are happy to provide us with a starter set consisting of ouzo and beer to go. After swimming, we stop at one of the tavernas for dinner and then sit under our awning for a bit and watch the rising red moon over the sea. Our route today takes us to the port city of Napoli, then short time later north of the Peloponnese, just for a quick stop. It is really warm today and the city center is quite crowded, 
so we concentrate on a little walk through the less frequented alleys. We admire the colourful houses and the colourful flowers in the old town. Later in the evening, we leave the Peloponnese and explore some exciting routes where tree resin is extracted on their sides. Then we reach the lovingly run campsite Alcioni and enjoy the delicious Cretan salad of the local taverna. Before we leave for Patras the next morning, we definitely want to see the Corinth Canal. A warm advice. If you want to see the canal, you should not follow the main signposting, but look at the canal a bit further to the west instead. There are some access roads here and hardly any tourist hustle and bustle. The signposted viewpoints somewhat remind us of a fairground with their many kiosks, bus parking lots and souvenir stores. We finally leave the Peloponnese over the bridge at Patras and head for the region around the Ambracian Gulf. At noon we stop at Bardi's Taverna, where we are served fresh fish on the grill and homemade liquors. After lunch, we head for the beach Flujo, which is not far away. The access road here is a bit of an adventure, though as the path is overgrown, narrow and steep in some places. But the way is worth it. Today we park directly on the beach with a view of the sea. But there's more. Finally, on our last evening, we meet the huge Greek sea turtles, which we have been trying to spot throughout all our vacation. It is a unique feeling to swim and dive with these huge, peaceful animals. With this experience, we end the evening in front of the car and some time later we even observe dolphins in the bay in front of us. This vacation couldn't have ended any better than with this evening, a worthy finale. Thanks a lot for watching. We are always happy about a like and a subscription to our channel. Feel free to check out our other travel reports about mainland Greece, Slovenia or Denmark for example. And of course see you next time.